Welcome back to my channel. In the last video, I said that the stories about my dramatic school life would be shared in a future video. That's not gonna to be today, but since this month, July, marks three years since I finished school, I thought it'd be a good time to make this video and to tell you this story. The inspiration for this video kind of came a bit from an article that I wrote a few months ago at the end of 2016 about my year, that the last year that led up to that, that point of me writing. And it was to inform people on my network, people I know about, uh, about that last year since things had changed a lot for me and changed a lot in my life. So people knew what I was doing, probably so I knew what I was doing a bit as well because I felt a little bit unsure and I think it's always good to sort of process things however works for you by talking about it, by writing about it. But today I'm going to be talking about the last three years of my life, up until now, since I left school. The plan was always to go to London and to train to be a chef. There was a three-year course that I was going to do and that I started that covers general in the first two years, so that's sort of all aspects of the kitchen and of, of the cooking and then also a little bit of front of house service, wine training, and then the third year you choose what you want to specialise in. Other than a disastrous and dramatic relationship that I'm not going to talk about, mostly just because it would take too long, the rest of the year was really good and it was a great first year of training. But at the end of it I didn't want to wait a whole other year before I could specialise because I had known for a long time um, way before I started the course that I wanted to specialise at the end in patisserie and bakery. So I transferred course, still with the same college, so that I could specialise early. And that would be a two year course, it was an apprenticeship course, so I would spend four days per week on placement working and one day per week training in London at the college. I was lucky enough to find a placement that's recommended by the college, just 15 minutes walk from where I lived. So I started work there, it was a small dessert factory, so it wasn't massive scale, but it wasn't a factory. The idea was that I would work my way around all the different parts, I would do all the processes, learn all the processes, learn all the procedures, and I would also work in new product development, which was the part that I was most interested in and hoping to do the most. So I worked my way around the factory in the first couple of months. I met lots of people, I got to learn pretty much all the processes that, that take place there, and I did lots, but the thing is, I'm an old man. I have so many problems with my joints. Since I was 14 or 15 years old, I've had bad knees. Since I was 16, I've had really bad tendonitis in my wrist, and the other wrist occasionally threatens to, to get bad as well. I have clicky, sometimes painful elbows and shoulders as well. And when I was 18, I got a hernia just here. Yeah, the factory needed to be very cold because it was for producing desserts and lots of chilled desserts as well. But some of you probably know the cold is not good for bad joints. To make things worse, I have really bad circulation as well, which is great um, normally for cooking, but the cold makes your circulation worse. And there was one day in the factory, I was allowed to wear gloves under the special food safe plastic gloves, but for some uh, processes, for some things that I needed to do, it wasn't very practical. So I remember there was one day towards the end of these first two months when I was working and it was better for me to not use the gloves and my little finger just went into spasm, like full on spasm, and I couldn't control my hand very well. Um, and the whole hand was kind of a little bit spasmy and, and weird and tight, but especially my little finger, I couldn't control it and it was like, weird and I had to go home and I had to call the doctor luckily everything was fine but the cold really was affecting my joints and also because even though I got to do so many different things in the factory and moving around and when I say factory it really was very hands-on it wasn't like pressing buttons and lots of machines it was much more of a handcraft but still it was doing one type of process a lot, like I'd spend a whole morning or half noon or sometimes even a whole day just doing one thing or two things, which exacerbates any sort of injury, which is kind of like repetitive strain, which tendonitis is and joints problems are. 
So basically everything just got really bad. So eventually I had to make the really difficult decision to leave and to stop the course just because I didn't think it was worth the risk of making my problems even worse and potentially making them sort of more lifelong. At the same time, this is November 2015, I stopped some work that I had been doing for a bit more than a year, a year and a few months, uh, which was being a representative and a demonstrator for Thermomix, which is a company that creates Thermomixes. Um, they are this amazing kitchen machine, kitchen appliance, as my friend here in Brazil calls it, the magic machine. And I stopped that for various reasons around the same time. It was the first time in 17 years that I was no longer in any form of education and it was just a massive change. I remember I went to the hairdresser because uh, I needed a haircut and I always had a fear of having my haircut too short when I was growing up, uh, even until this point, only until recently that I've got it a lot shorter. So I went to this hairdresser that I'd had for six years and I said, I'm having an early midlife crisis, so I'm just gonna go for it and I'm gonna get it even shorter this time. And it was the shortest I had had my hair cut since I was probably five or seven. I've always liked to keep myself busy and to be kind of producing things, using my time constructively, achieving things, organizing things. So for me, this was uh, difficult to adjust to. I will say though, I did like being able to sleep in late pretty much every day. So I cooked lots, it was obviously the build up to Christmas. That was great because I got to do so much cooking because I love cooking loads at Christmas. And I started doing some freelance work. Then in February, I went and I spent two weeks in New York because my dad was doing some work there for a few months. I love New York, so um, I had an amazing time and I met some great people who now I go and see and stay with when I'm there and I keep in touch with. And then I came back at the beginning of March I started doing a local monthly farmer's market. So I did that selling my products, my fresh baked products. I also continued doing some of my freelance work. Then in June, my friend uh, from my town where I lived, who is a director, writer, he's done some producing, some acting as well. He was filming his new film in Denmark. And on this Monday, he sent me a message asking if I wanted to be his personal courier and take some stuff out from England that he didn't want to ship to the film. Two days later, I was on a plane to Denmark. I'd never been before, so I was really excited. And the plan was I would go and come back on the Friday afternoon because I needed to be back for the weekend. So the film set was at the European Film College in Abeltoft, which is a sort of small town or village in, in Denmark. And amazing place, really beautiful and the college was really cool. Most of the people working on the film for crew, for lighting, camera, sound, all these things, and some of the actors as well, were ex-students who just finished the course there. So they were all sort of 19, 20, early 20s, and they were all really nice as well. While I was there, I just helped with everything. I did a tiny bit of catering. I helped basically anywhere that needed help. A bit of set design. I was an extra for one scene and it was really fun. So my friend asked if I wanted to come back the following week after the weekend because I had to be back in England. So I went back on Friday afternoon, spent the weekend in England, and then Monday morning I flew back to Denmark for another just under two weeks for the last two weeks of the film shoot. And I just carried on doing the same things, helping wherever anyone needed help, doing some set design. My one-off extra character became a recurring extra and I did a couple of other extra roles. And it was crazy how close I got to everyone in like the space of a week and a half. And on that following Monday when everyone was leaving, I was just devastated, like, I was so sad. And I was so overwhelmed by it all. I was tired because that weekend, the end of that weekend, we'd done a, a shoot, a long shoot that went late. When everyone else went to sleep in the morning, I didn't like sleeping in the day, so I just went on until the evening again. So I spent 37 hours on the go without sleeping. So I was tired, I was overwhelmed because it was so amazing, but also I was very sad because people were leaving. And I just had a complete emotional meltdown, which was kind of embarrassing, but... So I came back and then I had the rest of the summer till the end of August to do a few more farmer's markets, to do 
some more freelance work and just to enjoy myself and see as many friends as possible before I moved to Brazil. I forgot to say earlier, the plan was always to move to Brazil after my course, so I just pulled it forward a little bit after I dropped out of college. At the end of August, a couple of weeks before moving to Brazil, uh, my whole family moved from the southeast of England to near the south of Wales, sort of uh, Gloucestershire area, but right by the border. I spent a week and a bit there, then I went to spend sort of five days during the week with this uh, friend that I made uh, in Denmark. He's Swedish, but he studied obviously on the course at the European Film College. And then he moved in September to Edinburgh to do a, a further course at the University of Edinburgh. Really, really, really amazing time. In the middle of it, we were called down to London by the director friends to uh, help with some pickup shoots that they were doing. So I went to Edinburgh on the Monday, Wednesday morning. We got a really early flight, like on the plane at 7 a.m. down to London. Then we came back up to Edinburgh on Thursday afternoon slash evening, and I left Edinburgh on Friday night. Spent the weekend in England, and then Monday morning, I moved to Brazil. First couple of months in Brazil were so slow, and um, it was also overwhelming. I just felt, you know, I was missing people, I was missing home, I was missing things that I was used to. I was questioning whether it was the right decision to move. You know, you get all this doubt because it's such a crazy thing to do and it's so different to what you're used to. At the end of October and into towards the end of November, myself and my dad, we went with one of our friends from here in Brazil to South Africa and Zimbabwe for a few weeks uh, for some work that dad was doing with his new company. And that was an amazing time as well. Came back, the rest of the family came out for Christmas in Rio, which was really nice. Uh, since then, I've been by myself here in Brazil, pretty much. At the very end of March, I went via New York for a couple of days, back to England to visit people for a month and a half. Came back here in May, did the wedding cakes and desserts for our friend's wedding here, and a little bit of other freelance work, and that's basically it. And I'm going back to visit England again in August, in less than a month. It's all a bit crazy. Now you're probably wondering why I've just told you all of that and I've probably spoken like way too fast for most people to understand, so I'm sorry about that. The point of me telling you all that is firstly to give you an insight into my last few years and you know, get to know me a little bit. Mainly it's because, as I said, when I dropped out of my course and you know, stopped that other work I was doing at the same time, as I said, it kind of felt a little bit like an early midlife crisis and it was all a bit weird and I wasn't really sure what to do with myself, it was weird not having a routine and I got used to it a bit, but then it was like exacerbated even more when I moved to Brazil because it was not just having no routine somewhere that I knew and where I knew lots of people and I kind of had things to do. It was 5,000 miles away, more, not having a routine. And it was all very weird. Even much more recently, there have been times when I felt uh, a bit lost or disappointed about the lack of momentum uh, in my life and sort of, I've always been used to achieving things, being busy, so it's, it's weird for me not to be. And it kind of feels a bit discouraging sometimes. And it did back when I dropped out of the course as well. And there's this analogy that I really like to remember in these moments. It says, it takes the falling of the leaves to replenish the earth from which a tree grows, but so gives the tree a better chance of reaching its potential. The idea is, while lots of people like the colors of autumn, most people find bare trees, trees where all the leaves have fallen off, pretty depressing. But when the leaves fall to the ground, they actually decompose and they give nutrients to the earth uh, that feed the tree and you know, feed surrounding plants as well. So effectively, by falling, the leaves are giving that extra nutrition for growth and for new growth and new life. What the analogy means is there are times when things change and things come to an end and it's very easy to be discouraged by that and to see that as a bad thing and as I'm saying there are times when I, I did see that as a kind of bad thing or you know giving more uncertainty to my life but so many opportunities come for you know doing different things for doing new things for doing exciting things for 
for growing and developing yourself as a person or just for experiencing things and I think experiencing things is growing as a person. If I hadn't dropped out of college I wouldn't have got to spend that time in New York, I wouldn't have been on a professional film and met all those amazing people, I wouldn't have had the great experience of doing the freelance work in the markets and, and enjoyed that experience, I wouldn't have had as much time to spend with my friends and family before moving to Brazil. I wouldn't have been able to move to Brazil earlier. I wouldn't have been able to go to Africa and have the amazing experience that I had there. And I wouldn't have experienced every little thing that I have experienced in that time since I dropped out. I wouldn't have had all these amazing opportunities for travel and I wouldn't have met the person who is now one of my best friends. You know, sometimes even recently I've thought, you know, if I'd stayed in the college course, I would have just been finishing now, I would have had this amazing, really well recognised qualification and all this extra learning experience. But you can't, it's no good trying to weigh up between what might have been and the things that I have done and have experienced because there's no way of knowing what was going to be better. But what you can do is just acknowledge and appreciate all the amazing things that you do get the opportunity to do and that you have done. And so to remember this analogy really helps me if I'm feeling a bit sort of lost or uncertain or disappointed about things, you know, the way things turned out because the reality is I'm not disappointed at all. I'm really happy and I'm, I think it was a really good decision that I made. And I'm so grateful for the opportunities and experiences that I've been able to have because of that. So the message that I'm trying to get across, I suppose, in this video is it's important to stay as positive as you can. And I know that's really difficult a lot of the time. But, you know, as much as you can, stay positive and, and focus on the good things and like and acknowledge and appreciate the opportunities you've had and the experiences you've had because, because it's encouraging. And it's important to remember the good things, you know, as much as possible. So I'm sorry if that was all a bit crazy and a bit confused. I hope it made sense and I hope some of you found it encouraging or helpful. If any of you do have similar experiences or stories that you want to share, you know, please do in the comments or send me a message. Um, I'd love to hear about it and hear about you know, other people's experiences and perspectives about these things. Have a great week. I really encourage you to go and reflect on all the positive things in your life because it's just so good to do that. And I need some sort of saying for this channel. If anyone has any ideas of what my saying can be, I know that's cheating, but let me know. I'll try and think of something. As always, if you found this video informative or enjoyable, hopefully both, then please hit the like button, share and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Please do also check out my previous videos if you haven't already. There's only three plus a bloopers bonus video. So grab a drink and go and watch them. Ciao. Gosh, how long? <gasps> 50.